Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror mystery film, The Valdemar Legacy, Part 2, Forbidden Shadow. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the boss and his secretary driving late at night to the Valdemar mansion. They are tasked with joining the search for Luisa, who's been missing for four days already. The secretary questions why their company is keeping the appraiser's disappearances hidden from the police and press. The boss assumes it's always been the company's way to discreetly deal with issues. While traveling to the mansion, the boss quickly swerves the car in circles to evade a woman running in the middle of the road. The secretary panics, but the boss bravely checks on the day's woman outside. At the far end of the woods, the truck driver shoots his tranquilizer gun at the secretary first, who has exited the car, and next is the boss, who's returning to the car after seeing his secretary fade. The truck driver then glances at the dazed woman, but she disappears from the road. It's none other than Luisa escaping from the truck driver, who's chasing her. However, she falls off a slope, and hits her head on a tree root, making the truck driver miss her from the shadows of the trees. Thereafter, Luisa regains consciousness, as the gypsy cleans her bleeding forehead in a trailer. Luisa panics because she's in a different place again. But the gypsy calms her down, and says that she's safer in her place than being outside, for whoever's hunting her is not the first time they've done it. Meanwhile, the detective eats dinner with the president on the train. He wants to be friendly with the president, but she gently dismisses his advances. Then, he asks about the sketch's meaning from the Valdemar couple's diary, but the president reminds him that his job is to find Luisa, and not learn from the diary. Momentarily, the president resumes the life story of Lassero after his wife, Leonor's sacrificial death. A hundred years ago, Lassero became obsessed with obtaining the Book of the Dead, or Necronomicon. It contains rituals, and summoning spells from the beyond realms. The butler convinced him that Leonor was dead. But Lassero refused to believe this, shut down the butler's concern, and asked him to leave him alone. Lassero's cult was based on the so-called Great Old Ones, gods that precede any religion. Lassero eventually found and bought Necronomicon from northern Iran, but no one knew why he bought it. Afterward, Lassero regained his wealth, and returned to high society. One day, he hosted a party in his Valdemar mansion to celebrate his success in obtaining the Necronomicon, However, a visitor, named Mr. Lovecraft, met with Lassero in his study room, and warned him that whoever owned it would never end well. However, Lassero was determined to keep the Necronomicon all by himself, and locked the book in his drawer to keep others from stealing it. Lassero left Mr. Lovecraft in his study room, while behind another door, the butler was eavesdropping. He called Mr. Lovecraft to convince Lassero to free himself from the possession of the book, but his plan failed. Mr. Lovecraft complimented the butler for being a good guardian for Lassero, despite his stubbornness. Back to the present, the gypsy reads tarot cards for Luisa in the trailer. She read Luisa's recent past, present, and immediate future. Despite Luisa's skepticism towards pseudoscience, the gypsy explains that it's not for Luisa to believe in, but for her to understand. The first three cards show Luisa as intelligent, a mansion, and the people who have influenced her lately to commit acts of evil. Afterward, the gypsy asks Luisa to tell her what happened from the beginning, which Luisa obliges. A flashback kicks in, when Luisa woke up yesterday in a strange boarding house, with no telephone and no explanation. She left the boarding house the next morning, and found the housekeeper in a barn. Then she asked for a ride into town. The housekeeper thought Luisa was the truck driver, but it wasn't. So the housekeeper searched for the truck's car keys, while Luisa examined the board filled with 180 portrait photographs. Apparently, those are all the missing people. For the housekeeper, the adults and children were his friends before they went missing. He shared that he assisted in the search with the police. Luisa asked if they never asked for help from the press. The housekeeper got mad upon hearing the word press, for he believed they often twisted stories. He sits on the ground, and asks Luisa to grab his medicine, which is meant for horses. Luisa still gave the medicine, despite knowing the risk. The housekeeper swallowed a handful of medicines, but eventually vomited them out. The housekeeper, dazed by the medicine, revealed that he had eaten the missing people and children during the initiation to the cult, despite being opposed to the idea of it. Afterward, he warned her to leave immediately, or else they were going to feed her to the beast, and then to him. Luisa then rushed outside the barn. But the truck driver caught her, and stunned her with a taser gun. The truck driver then found the housekeeper cowering behind the wall, and brutally kicked him repeatedly. Afterward, the truck driver locked Luisa in the bedroom again, while the housekeeper went into a room. He talked to people in vibrant clothes, who were telling him to stand up against the truck driver and slice him into pieces, and then save Luisa. It turns out that the people were rather mannequins, merely the housekeeper's hallucinations. He then grabbed his earpiece for his broken left ear, and an axe to use against the truck driver. 
He returned to the boarding house, and imagined the axe on top of the sleeping truck driver. But he freed Luisa first by picking the lock. Luisa successfully escaped the house, while the housekeeper hid behind the closet. However, the truck driver woke up too late, and chased Luisa outside. Luisa fled through the forest and reached a road, where a car almost ran over her. She fell on the asphalt, and couldn't make out the driver. After hearing Luisa's story, the gypsy asked her to open the single tarot card for the present. It's an upside-down wheel of fortune, symbolizing danger. The gypsy asks Luisa to return to the mansion at once. Just then, Luisa realizes the gypsy is a member of the cult. But the gypsy clarifies that she in the past was a member of the cult, who took away her baby boy. She asks Luisa to bring her baby boy back, and warns her that she's not in the mansion by chance. Suddenly, someone knocks on the trailer, and Luisa thinks it's the truck driver. But when Luisa turns around, the gypsy is gone. Luisa opens the door, and strikes the detective's head with a pan, and he immediately falls unconscious. The president shakes him to wake him up, but stops upon recognizing Luisa. She introduces the detective, and says that they have arrived, from the train station. Luisa embraces the president in relief, then approaches the detective to wake him up. Shockingly, the president suffocates Luisa, with a chloroformed handkerchief. Afterward, the president radios the truck driver to report that she has caught two prize specimens, and warns the truck driver to keep his hands off the housekeeper. In the boarding house, the housekeeper comes out of hiding, after hearing the president's voice record. Because of his injured ear, the housekeeper can't distinguish a real voice from a walkie-talkie. The truck driver holds a walkie-talkie, saying the housekeeper has a visitor, revealing one of the housekeeper's mannequins. The truck driver decapitates the mannequin's head, warning the housekeeper to do his job accordingly, or else it'll be a real head next time. Meanwhile, the detective wakes up in the mansion's basement, along with the boss, the secretary, and Luisa. They wear fake shackles, and in front of them is a camera. The detective wakes up the boss first, and lets him awaken the other two women. Once everyone is awake, the detective introduces himself, and starts examining the room. The basement they're locked in is the preparator's playroom, and the shackles and bloody backdrop are props. There are photographs pinned on the wall of previous horrified victims. Luisa then explains her disappearance, but the boss stops her, saying there's no time for storytelling. The detective continues his story, saying the chairman hired him to investigate Luisa's disappearance. The boss believes that they're locked in the same room, because they're all appraisers. He also adds that the former appraiser is still missing. But Luisa clarifies that the former appraiser had died from being maimed in the mansion. However, the detective's connection to them is still unclear, until the detective explains his side, the detective tells everyone that he and the former appraiser plan to steal a portion of the company's hidden 650 million plus hoarded money. All they needed was a plate to replicate the seal, used on company documents. But when they finally found one in the summer, the former appraiser declared that it was far more valuable than money. Afterward, he disappeared, and the detective never heard from him again, until Luisa announced his death right now. The secretary suddenly remembers that a man in black glasses, walked into their meeting room, and told them to evaluate the Valdemar mansion, which the former appraiser volunteered, and named Luisa, the boss, and the secretary as his support team. Luisa reckons that they're probably locked in, because the detective and the former appraiser wanted to embezzle money. But the detective defends himself, by saying their plan never happened. The four of them eventually argued and blamed one another. Then the boss speaks up, and simplifies the situation. When the detective involved the former appraiser in embezzling the hoarded money, the former appraiser involved the boss and the secretary as his support team. Then, the boss sent Luisa to evaluate the mansion, but when Luisa went missing, the detective was hired by the chairman. Therefore, their involvement in the mess at the mansion becomes clear, the man in glasses must have learned about their plan. Meanwhile, the truck driver welcomes four vans parked in front of the mansion. A twist reveals as the company's chairman appears as the cult sommelier, and the man in black glasses is Chamberlain. More importantly, Lassero is still alive after 150 years. Back in the basement, the housekeeper arrives to let the four employees escape on one condition, they need to bring the gypsy's baby outside too. The boss doubts the housekeeper's identity and condition, but Luisa defends him, saying that if the boss only let her finish the story, then he would know. Before leaving, the detective equips himself with a taser, carries his jacket, and collects victims' photographs for evidence. The boss and his secretary doubt the housekeeper. But Luisa convinces them that he's a kind man who saved her. They travel in a tunnel. And there, the housekeeper confesses that the cult ordered him to kidnap a baby, but when he refused, the truck driver broke his ear. But the housekeeper tells them that he already took and hid the gypsy's baby. After the tunnel, they enter an underground floor, where there's a crib. The housekeeper carries the baby boy. 
but to everyone's eyes, it's just a doll, not a real one. Then they enter a gate to the cave, where the beast from the beginning awaits. They venture deeper, until the beast chases them. Everyone runs across the rocky path, then through the bridge that collapses afterward. Soon after, they climb a steep crevice. Upon reaching the top, the beast catches the boss, who's at the back of the queue. The detective tries to shoot the beast with a taser, but he's too far. So he gives it to the secretary. When the secretary shoots the beast, it stuns the boss too, causing the two to fall off the heights. The secretary cries in pain seeing the boss die. But the detective calms her down, after confronting the housekeeper about what's with the beast lurking in the cave. However, the housekeeper explains the cult never told him everything. After escaping death from the beast, the group reach a tunnel upward. To everyone's surprise, the housekeeper leads them into a trap, as hooded disciples of the cult beckon them deeper into the cave. The detective is confused to see the chairman, and even confesses and apologizes for planning to steal the company's money. But the chairman only laughs, and looks for the boss. The secretary outbursts in anger, shouting that it's their fault that the boss died from the beast in the cave. The chairman nonchalantly comments that it's a pity, because he had other plans for him. The detective finally realizes why the cult has been capturing people. He recognizes the medallions on the robes, Cthulhu. It is an ancient cult, which required 666 human sacrifices to accomplish a series of arcane invocations. And now, there are exactly the four missing people needed to complete the number. The chairman is impressed that the detective explained the cult's goal in simple terms. But the detective only warns the chairman that their plan won't work, and covering up 666 deaths of people is not that easy to hide from the police. But the chairman is determined to execute the ritual, just as the magician was in convincing Lasaro a hundred years ago. Later, the three employees are brought to the ritual site. They are tied to a pillar for the sacrificial offer. The chairman receives reports from Chamberlain that the sleeping beast in the abyss was captured easily and is being delivered. Then, Chamberlain searches for the boss, but since he died, the chairman asks if they can kill a member of the cult. Chamberlain says they already mix outsiders into the offering, and adding members will only mess things up. But the chairman doesn't want to listen, because Chamberlain only wants to take his place as the sommelier. The ritual eventually begins. The chairman stands on a podium, and eats a tarantula in the process. Then, Lossero, accompanied by the president, comes out into the light to read the Necronomicon. The three employees have their heads covered up, and the detective recognizes Lazaro's face from afar. The cult brings out the chained beast, and places it in the center, and the housekeeper places the baby doll in the middle of the table for sacrifice, because offering the baby is essential in creating a link between the human world and the underworld. To show the devils the respect they need, they must kill the baby brutally, and with no hesitation. The chairman chants a prayer, and plunges the dagger into the baby doll, but instead of blood splurging out, there's nothing. The ritual is disrupted, because there's no actual baby. Chamberlain explains to the president that the great old ones must never be mocked. Possibly because of that, the cave quakes suddenly, the chained beast goes berserk, and the chairman chants an apology, as a gigantic demon with wings and GPS tentacles appears before them. The cult members pray to the demon, but it only kills them all, thus completing the four missing sacrificial offers, required to fill in the obelisk. The gigantic demon eats the chairman next, and then Lasaro proceeds to pray his request to stop the invocation, and end the curse that ruined his family. Suddenly, black hands from the underworld grab the gigantic demon, and withdraw it back into darkness. As the demon disappears, Leonor returns. The two lovers reunite once again, ready for hormonity. But their youthful features become old and wrinkly, since the curse has now been lifted, and their bodies now follow the nature of time. Chamberlain explains to Lasaro that he can still request the book, before it disappears completely. Leonor wants Lasaro to use his last request to free the sacrificed souls, because the Great Old Ones never liked them. She heard the souls cry in agony, when she was in purgatory for the last 100 years. Lasaro obliges the wish of his wife, prays for his request, and the trapped souls break free from the obelisk, and fly to the heavens. Lasaro and Leonor then die side by side, as their oldness takes over their bodies. Meanwhile, the housekeeper confronts the truck driver with his axe, However, the truck driver insults him and even shoots his side, but the housekeeper quickly chops off his chubby body into pieces. Later arrives the police officer, whom the housekeeper called for earlier. The ambulances come to, to aid the three survivors in a tent, and count the corpses found in the cave. Reporters try to get a scoop, but they're dragged away. Meanwhile, the gypsy arrives in a tent, for as it turns out, her lost son is none other than the housekeeper. Another officer comes to the tent to ask what they've witnessed. But the moment he leaves as requested by the medical staff, the gypsy tells them that the officer is part of the cult. 
The cult is nervous, because it's the first time someone has survived the ritual. The movie ends with Chamberlain offering the three employees to join the cult, as the new sommelier. But the detective dashingly negotiates, saying they need to leave them out of their crazy group, or else they'll expose the boss's compiled data and birth certificates, of 650 people from the foundation for the last years. Chamberlain has left no choice, but to accept the condition in exchange for the cult's secrecy. The three employees leave the tent as reporters swarm around them, but they keep their big mouths tightly shut as promised. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel, stay safe and enjoy your day.